Welcome back to Married to the Game. Married to the Game. What is good? Welcome into the FF Dynasty's after show. We just got finished up with a little uh, mock draft from the three spots. So we're going to get in here, maybe get a little thoughts on a couple of things in there. Maybe not. Who knows? It's the after show. We get to do whatever we want. Mm, freestyle. Freestyle. Er- 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 so uh, I got, <laughs> got my three guys here. Me being one of those guys. I'm, <laughs> I'm one of my guys. Me, myself, and I. And uh, Jay Wayne, what up? Oh, good. I just I buttoned my cord into my shirt. I Whoops. thought you meant to do that. <laughs> I was like, wow, he's really trying something new over there. You know how you should have came on the intro? Que esta bueno. <laughs> Go. No, 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 no. Big uh, what up? <laughs> What's up? Oh, not too much. Put it just right back chilling. on you. You know what I hate is the stop and chat. And not just the stop and chat, but like when you walk by someone and you, you can acknowledge them, make eye contact. Oh, how about the crack Fresh and chat? Crack. crack and chat. And, and just like, about to get out of there and dude cracks a beer. So, right. What's, up? <laughs> What's your view on religion? <laughs> now, What's the worst is when, like, you're walking past someone and you make eye contact and you say, hey, you know, hey, how's it going? And, you, and the other guy's like, good. good. How, how's your day? And you're just like, why did you follow up with a question? Like, I just said, what's up? Give me the rhetorical. What's up? What's up? That's all you need to do. You don't right. need to be like, oh, Too how sucks. are you? What's up? Then I got to stop just, and be like, oh, I'm doing very is, well. How are you? This is why you have to go just with a nod. Mm-hmm. Just a little just nod. A eye contact nod. What? Your or, eyes. Or a, all right now. Well, sure. That's a solid one. That one goes All way right back. Now. That one that one's near and dear to my heart. Which really do is you give them that that you know, you throw your head up a little bit, give them the old uh half smile, half I see you over there, but I'm headed this way. Like I appreciate you, appreciate you, but I gotta keep it moving. Really wish I could stop and talk to you right now. So I'm looking at you right now like I really would much rather talk to you than what I got to do, but that is not the case. It's not what I'm feeling. Yeah, not you know feeling I, it at all. You know I hate those when you see a Facebook friend and they don't acknowledge that you're friends. It's like, what are we doing here? <laughs> what kind of society are we living in? I'm unfriending you. <laughs> oh, you get unfriended quick <laughs> for the non-acknowledgement out in public. I can't even get on Facebook anymore. It's, it's no way I'm scrolling through a Facebook feed. No. The non-acknowledgement, you know what I hate? I'm sitting in traffic. I've stopped short of letting, you know, blocking up an intersection, right? Mm-hmm. I've, I've acknowledged that someone may need to use that intersection. So instead of blocking it with my 40-foot rig, long truck and trailer, <laughs> I've stopped short. And somebody comes up and just skirts on in there all nice and neat because I've left it wide open. Yeah. Can't even get a hand raise. Like, appreciate you not blocking You're that. You're welcome. Oh, because if I it was blocked. Non- I hate the non-acknowledgement. I just need acknowledgement of my acknowledgement. If right. I had blocked it up, I'm getting there laying on the horn and then being like, hey, mm-hmm. asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's not blocked. So you didn't have to lay on the horn. Can't even get a, a, th- a hand. You know, just throw the hand up one time. Just throw it up. You you know, don't, you have, know to, don't have to shake it. Gears, bad don't have to mergers. move it. Just throw, yeah, Bo. Just Bad one mergers. In, just one, one, one v one. Let's it's, go. This is like zipper. This is you got to exactly. zipper. This is, zipper it's, it's it up. A, this is as easy as I can explain it. You've been using it your whole life. It's a zipper. It's a zipper. The concept of the zipper is it folds one on one on one on one, and you zip up. Yep. It's an even <laughs> flow it's, both it's, sides. It's really zip pretty up. simple concept, but everyone's such an asshole that they have to ran, run up that side lane, and just because there's, especially when they know there's a merge coming and there's still a side lane, but everyone's kind of conceded to the fact that, oh, we all got to get in one lane because it's going down <laughs> to one lane, and then that jerk off is just flying down the right side of the but see, right everybody there? should be in the right side. You should, you you should still be. split it up. Yeah, if, yeah, if it's take up both lanes. If you've committed too early, I'm flying down the right side. Oh no way! Not when not when you're in dead stop traffic. No, nah, I mean, there's, there's space. There's room. No, there's no space. way. How are you supposed to I'm zipper it up. if there's not two right, lanes? Right, there's of no traffic. zipper. We no just way. got in one long line. It's dead stop. Tra- the traffic is the zipper is no longer working. <laughs> We're in dead stop traffic. Just line up. You're making it more of a problem. Because no. you're Go just ahead. flying I'm, I'm up gonna, here. I'm going to jump about 70 oh, 100%. cars. Everybody that doesn't move cars. when traffic starts to move, they're the problem. And that's why it's backed up. And that's why I'm getting in that right no, no, lane. No, 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 and no. I'm going to find someone no, that, sleeping. That's and I'm not getting why in there. it's backed up. It's backed up because people didn't know how to merge. And then you're going into a one lane area and there's nowhere else to go. Right. And now you got assholes on the right side. It's clearly backed up, but we're just going to fly up there anyway, two at a time. There's nowhere to go, Bo. Just get in the back of the line. That's how you zipper. Uh, just get in the back of the line. I'm skipping the line. I think, of course I th- you are, because you're an asshole. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Happy to be up there and 
Would you say? Well, yeah, I'll tell back? you what. You're crashing into me before I let you in. <laughs> yeah. There is Casey's no not. way that you're coming in. Casey's you're, that Big Mac truck that's just taking up both lanes. Me. Like, we're trying get out of here, paint. <laughs> jerk. We're trying. You can paint. clearly see it's dead stop, and that lane's gonna run out. Cut that shit. Yo, out. I rolled up on this Rolls Royce the other day, and no tinted windows. I could see all up in that thing. I could see That's who was different. driving it. That's well, different. If you got a Rolls Royce, you got to tint the windows, right? Nah, maybe. I mean, he's you, open. You want to see? You want to make eye contact? <laughs> just shitting on everybody. Just yeah. look at me. He wasn't Big attractive. Big in the Rolls Royce. You of course know? he wasn't. He was driving a Rolls it Royce. It doesn't even matter. I got Rolls Royce money. Yeah. It's more intriguing if you don't know what's going on in there. Could be. Could be something I don't even know about. You I know? mean, I'm riding around with them windows down, mm-hmm. hand out. What up? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Anyhow. Anyway. All right. You guys want to talk some football? You want to talk about Michael Jordan? You want to talk about Le'Veon Bell? Mm. Mm -mm. Lev Bell. No No no, no, no Lev Bell money talk for me. I'm out. Can we we talk about how everyone really hates on LeBron James? Nope. Is he a Laker now? Football related. He is a Laker now. Staying in football lane. You know what drains me though, real quick, is that they always talk about <laughs> real quick <laughs> how this 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 other generation of basketball players, you know, everyone was so much better. And like I get it, it was a lot more physical, and you could do some different things. But in every other sport, it's so crazy. These athletes just seem to be getting better and better. But basketball, there's no way these athletes are getting any better. Yeah. Well, the so, athlete is getting better, but the sport is. It's not like it's not it's not what it was. It's just a bunch of individuals out there that that don't get to be like they get fouled on every time they touch the ball it's like it's it's kind of hard to watch just it's you get the ball you dribble you get fouled you shoot some free throws and then you move along like back in the day jordan there was jordan rules and you could you he was getting fouled all over the place but they're not calling it the way they I, are now. I, I see what i can concede to the fact that it, it seems like basketball doesn't appreciate. Nobody says, "Yeah, these uh, these guys are obviously bigger, faster, stronger." That's all we talk because about in every other sport. You're bigger, faster, stronger in football. You're bigger, faster, stronger in baseball. But you're, I mean, you, if you look back at the team pictures in the '70s and look at the right. team pictures in the 2000s. They're they completely have different the sizes. Shorts. They brought back the shorts, though. I kind of like that. Completely different sizes. I so, get it. I get what you're that's saying. That's the only thing that drains me. Everyone just wants to talk about like everything's always better when it. The, in the past, like there's well, no I way mean, you can. Well, back in the day, <laughs> well, nobody's sitting there and says, "Well, Jordan could have been an NFL tight end." Right. Yeah, that's LeBron. I'm not taking anything away from Michael Jordan. No, me neither. But I'm I just mean, saying, like, you know, they want to talk about how Jordan played in this era with all these better players, and it's like, well, I mean, but every other sport, the athletes are just getting bigger, faster, stronger. They're definitely getting bigger, faster, stronger in basketball. Sure. But yeah, they're dunking from the three point line. Well, everybody can dribble now and shoot from the outside, so. Right, but what, which yeah. would maybe be a case for they're getting better. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the sport, the team sport is not. The presence it's not getting better. You no know, inside mean, presence of the big man drains me. Let's go eleven on eleven instead of five on five. All right, mm. fair enough. Well, I think mm. I think we talked. Everybody about, knows you only watch playoff basketball this anyway. Is, you this don't is watch. Right. True. You can't let's, watch. Let's cut it in, just let's, like baseball. Let's, let's just cut call it in half. Call it like it is. Fourth. This is. It's playoff basketball and nothing else. Let's just start basketball in January. And it's not even playoff basketball. It's like conference finals basketball. That's yeah, fair enough. I'll, I'll go playoff. You go playoff? I'll go play. Once a, there's not a whole lot on. Yeah. More than half the league is in the playoffs. It's ridiculous. Right. Well, that's I mean, a money thing. Yeah. It's a true. whole other season. It's ridiculous. Can't do it. All right. All right. 11 well, on 11. <laughs> we'll get to 11 on 11. I guess one of the things that... I wanted to talk about was we we touched a little bit about on Devontae Parker in the draft uh, that we just did from the three spot. Uh, he ended up going in, in 411. We took Darius Geis, you know, a little bit before Devontae Parker. None of us were necessarily interested in, in that spot of taking Devontae Parker. But if you look at his um, June ADP of 77 and then his July ADP had a almost a 10 spot increase here to 68. Um is that interesting to anybody here? Because I, I mentioned that, you know, I thought there was an easy path to wide receiver one kind of over there for Jarvis or uh, Parker. Devontae, Devontae Parker, Parker in, in Miami. And, you know, maybe I would start considering looking near the end of the fourth. But at 68 or the 77, um, I'm, I'm definitely a lot more interested in in in. Devonte Parker. Well, when we were doing the mock draft, obviously we do concede that more than likely Darius Geis isn't going to be there in the late fourth round to even have that as a choice. But even if he was off the board, I can't, I can't register Devonte Parker right now, knowing what I know as my fourth guy on fourth, a startup. I yeah, I, I can't, I can't do that. 
Um, can't do the fourth. I can't. But, I can't. But do, 68's I, he can't fifth, be my right. Yeah. So I can't. He can't can yeah, fluctuate and, a little. And even and even to the sixty eighth. Yeah, I mean that's mid fifth round. Or no, that's five times twelve is sixty. So that's mid sixth round. Mm. So right. he could be your he could be your sixth guy, and you know that's a lot more palatable to me. If you look at his ADP history chart, I mean it's it's, it's down in the dumps right now. From it's where well, it was. it's obvious. Yeah, yeah. Well, no doubt. I mean, he it's it's a bit. It was a roller coaster. He debuted, you know, as a rookie, thirty seventh. So that's into that's you know first pick of the fourth round. Had his freshman year in the NFL, coming off the inner injury, like Jay Wayne's going to tell you about. Came up to ADP eighteen going into twenty sixteen, and so that's you know so you had some people drafting him in the middle of the second round as going into his right. second year, and then that didn't work out, and then it kind of come back around last year. It was like okay, here comes that third season breakout wide receiver right. stuff, and it just didn't happen. Plummeted, and it's just you it, know it it didn't it definitely didn't happen. But like that's that's the reason why I'm really interested in Devonte parker the most is because there was a jarvis landry that whole time that he was there and now that that well that that's jarvis landry is gone and there's a 160 a much, targets right there's 160 targets gone and there's a much easier like there are no there is nobody on this team that should command the kind of targets that Devonte parker oh, should not have close. on this team right so like for the adp to be dropping off like i i, I saw the uh matt kelly say something the other day about don't hate the player hate the adp i think that's perfect i've heard other people say that i don't hate Devonte parker but there was no way that i was ever drafting him up in those 18 Woo. early rounds like yeah. that i just wasn't interested but now it's really fallen into a decent place for me spots later no sure. jarvis there's i mean i like kenny stills as much as the next guy but it's mostly the value on kenny stills exactly. that i can get exactly and there's i mean albert wilson we were you know mm -hmm. i'm not really worried about any well, of these. he's not gonna come in and gobble up 160 for 60 targets from the jar that's I'm right like, but he was on pace last year with jarvis lander to be in there to be a, like 120 yeah, uh, yeah. He had I mean, ninety six, I believe. Let me find. Let me. Let me look. Well, here. his first his first couple games of the season last year. Yeah, he had nine targets week one, nine and ten targets the next 96 week. Ninety six targets, missing three games. He, yeah, I mean, so he had basically twenty. He had twenty seven targets in three games to start the year with four catches, eight catches, six catches, and then he got hurt week five and missed set six, seven, eight. Nicked up. Comes back all right. Has a one catch game. Then twelve and thirteen is good, and then. You know, chunks of the season was decent last year. Right. The problem with this guy is has been health. And right. if we can get to the a healthy Devontae Parker, you so know, it's this it's his right foot, right? Right. So I don't, saggy foot. Looking at I've never really looked at the injury history here. I knew he always was always just there was always something going on with this guy. And that was part of the reason why I never was really that interested, because he always had some injury bug and, and I, I didn't have it in my plums off the rip, even though he was the fourteenth pick overall in, in two thousand fifteen which is a pretty high pretty oh, yeah. high spot to be taken in. Uh, but looking at the injury history in, in 2014, right, so that would have been his last year in college, he, he fractures his fifth metatarsal in his left foot, missed seven games, um, has a screw inserted in, right? Dolphins decide to still draft him middle of the first round. Talent trumps it there. In, let's see, is it the preseason? He breaks that screw that's in his surgically repaired foot and has it replaced misses the first only misses three preseason games and returns for the fourth one which sounds horrible now that you say it like right. that what are you doing you just had it you had, you changed the screw out in your foot like you changed a spare tire right. and got back in there you hey, you'll get back into the fourth game of the in preseason now you're now you're looking down the line here you definitely ruined 16 for him with this well, you ridiculousness ruined, you ruined 15 for sure because then he has well yeah for sure i mean that was so a given he tears some some scar tissue in that same foot later in 15 and then in 16 he has a hamstring pull in camp and then in the final let's see then he has another hamstring injury in the final game of the preseason hurts his back in 16 this is all that was all in 16 and then in 17 he sprains his right ankle in week five so like early kind of early in the year but was he's, he's playing well ankle. before that happened right you you read off the numbers there and that was really good and then he and so it's it's just it's his right foot that right. is just been this but problem if the dolphins would have just shelved him for 15 after right. having some yeah. foot problems you just have this prize possession that you just picked up shelf this man right let him get healthy and then come back on a 16 and, and you might not have even had some of these injury problems that you have right and well 
sorry, the, the the biggest thing is if you look at the game log from 17, it was is even though he wasn't healthy after the first couple of weeks, he finished strong. There was there was nasty games in there as nasty as a bad way, like five, to, you know, three targets, one catch, five yards, four targets, one catch, five yards. So obviously not even a in the game plan. With right. they, and basically and decoy is not right. We're not right. Which has been exactly. I think a lot of his career. But has then been all that of a way. sudden, he's in one there, day, but he's not right. Well, you know, week week thirteen or fourteen or whatever this is, they're like, well, he's right enough to get twelve targets. He gets six for eighty nine. The next week, he gets ten targets, five for sixty three. And then the last week of the season, seven targets, six for sixty four. So he got right enough down to str- so his first three games well, and I mean, his last an three ankle games. Sprain week five, right. right? So his last his first three games, last three games were super, so- you know, not super solid but for the Dolphins as a whole whose offense was horrible offensive line was horrible everything was horrible except for Jarvis Landry and five games of Kenyon Drake like right. everything else was horrible for the you know they had Jay Cutler in there and just mismatch everything and so what what's happening here is I like Jay, Jay Wayne said I he wasn't ex- Extremely excited. I loved Devontae Parker coming in his rookie year. I loved the. Yeah. I loved that AJ Green comparison. I loved the sky's the limit potential. I loved all that. I, you know, I I held on to him for a while, as far as like what I wanted him to do and what I wanted him to be. And the between you know Miami's screwing around with what they got going on their quarterback situation and his health and you get the stories about him not being you know committed and, and that's uh, that's the other you thing. know it's Man. like well well are you going to stop eating that. are you going to stop eating junk food and playing video games and take care of your body and go into the room go into the play you know right. go go in there and watch film and care and all that stuff and obviously you know they're ta- saying that the he's, talk of the town is well, he's Top notch right now as far as effort. His effort is there. Well, you said they're saying Jarvis takes 160 targets. There's nobody. You're hard pressed to find anybody who spent since the season ended to find anybody who spent more time in the facility working out and and training and doing all these other things than than Devonte Parker has, which has been a kind huge problem, yeah. a huge issue because of you know. You, you can't listen. Antonio Brown didn't get to be Antonio Brown from Without doing, doing whatever the hell he wants. Like he's yeah. showing up nine to five. The right. problem with that though is what it's almost like you cry wolf and you know all that stuff. Like the the Dolphins have been the worst for a couple seasons in a row about talking their guys up, and half of it has been the Devonte Parker talk. Right, you but know? but that they were ne- they've never really been talking him up. They've been th- what they've been saying is, is he, like this guy could be really good, but he doesn't like Gase. Basically, last season was saying how this guy could be really good, but he just doesn't seem to care that much. Like yeah. you hate reading. So that. you're you're finally getting a like you're not gonna you, you can't really lie about a guy being a gym rat at the facility and and doing all that. Like maybe you finally get it. Like this is gonna be your opportunity and like. Maybe you don't have so many injury plague seasons if you're over there actually taking care of yourself, working out. Maybe we can get rid of these these injury problems. Like again, Antonio Brown really doesn't miss too many games. No, it's not a coincidence that he works out like a maniac. Right, and he's right. just on on a whole nother if level. If you follow on him on Snapchat, he is working out all the and time. And bad luck happens. Like anybody, you could be in the best shape of your life and work out. Like Antonio Brown gets concussed, and Antonio Brown. Might have a well, knee. I don't know what Bengals, his list but, of injuries are, or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. you know, bad things happen. You can get hurt of being in phenomenal shape. But I'm just saying, you're gonna like, get hurt if you play the Bengals twice a year. Just this that. is a guy who this guy is the limit. He's six three, two hundred and twelve, twelve pounds. He's had great spots throughout his career. Flashes he just hasn't sure. put it all together. Yeah. And there's nobody in this lineup to take targets away. He should be. The King Dingling number one in this lineup, he should get the most target share in this um, group. But like last year, uh, Jarvis was there and he was on pace for like 120 targets, 96 missing three, 96 targets missing three games. Like that's yeah. awesome. And then then you, there's games with one ki- bunch of one catch games in there. Exactly. Like no. you you yeah. get rid of all. He c- should be a red zone machine <clears throat> if he's gonna show up to the mach- the facility and take this seriously. I think this is you could. Finally, he could. There's no reason he doesn't get 120, right. 130, 135 targets this year if Maybe he's on the he field. Finally, taps into this like alpha number one reserve that we kind of had a hunch that he might possess here. Yeah, like yeah. I think this is why he's so intriguing to me. That everything's kind of down for him as far as ADP and and views on him. But he's Jarvis is gone. He could be. He should be the lead dog, and he he seems to have his head in the right place. So and working out the thing. So the thing about it is, is where you. You know, each each draft is different. We all know that. And we harp on that a lot. Um, so in your startup this year, if he falls far enough to where you feel like you want to snag him up, that's one thing. 
I've still I'm not gonna go read I'm not gonna he's probably not gonna be the fifth guy on my team, but I could I could see him in the no, sixth round. No, but once round. he gets into those sixties and seventies, I I could see that. I m- me personally, there's Jay Wayne popping in with a new crack like it. I'm taking Robert Woods because I know what I'm getting because that's my dog and I know what I'm getting out of Robert Woods. But I the upside is higher with Devontae Parker, obviously. But I'm safer with Robert Woods. But if you have a solid core, the upside is next of, year he's a second round pick. A really nice, Devontae a Parker. really nice swing on Devonte Parker right. is not a bad thing. And whether you could potentially get Devonte Parker and then follow it up with Robert Woods if the rounds fall right for you, that'd be a good back to back. And then grab Larry and your wide receivers are set. Boom. And th- but see that, but that's where I was getting to. If you do take a chance on Devonte Parker in the sixth round, and you got five solid players on your team, or you've traded up and maybe you got more than five already, I love to have like seven guys on my team through five rounds. That's how I like to play it. But if you with the the last two mock drafts that we've done here, if you've been listening to us and watched the cool video on YouTube, like that's the biggest thing is there's so many wide receivers to follow this pick that you can mitigate the, the chance. The risk, yeah. You, you can take some of that risk out of it. You can mitigate the Devontae Parker pick if you don't reach for him. There's no there's no coming back from a blown fourth round yeah, pick. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm, again, I don't think you should be reaching him for him in the mid fourth, if, late if you fourth. Let it, but if, if you, you get if into you those late 60s, you, 70s. If you let it happen and, you've t- and you're smart about it and you're like, all right, well, Devontae Parker over some of the people, so there's some replacement pay- people here. You know, I can grab Devonte here, and this is his fourth year. And the third year breakout didn't happen, but it was about to happen. Those right. first three games, it was about to happen. In the last three games, it was happening. It's just everything in between was horrible. I can see it. I can see it. It I all can. it all goes back to the injury thing for me. You can look at it one of two ways. I mean, the facts are is that he's basically suffered a pretty solid injury in the early stages of every season he's been in the NFL. So you can kind of either take that as a negative, like he's gotten hurt every year, or you can kind of make an excuse for what his overall production has been because he's been basically playing through injury his whole career right. and then also well, missing games on top of that. That was kind of a point that I was trying to make was just, you know, he's he's well, he's out there a lot. He does he misses games, but he plays a decent amount, and he hasn't been right in a lot of those games. And when right. it seems like when he is right, he is a dominant guy, even right. when Jarvis was around. And I sure. hate the screw foot. But, I mean, there's plenty of screw feet out there. You know, Julio's got a screw foot. Sammy's got a screw foot. Just got paid. For sure. And, I mean, if this doesn't uh, – obviously, this doesn't just go to startup realms. Like, and, and in all of my withstanding leagues that I've been in for a while, like, I'm definitely testing the waters on where Devontae Parker's owner's at. So, you know? Could I, be pissed trying I, to get out. Well, that's it, what I'm saying. Like somebody, like you just read off where his ADP was. Yes. You know? Oh, yeah. So and somebody was, spent that money on him already, and they've been hanging out waiting. That's exactly what I said about when we when we were on the clock talking about that, and when I was like, "Well, there's no way I can make him my fourth pick." But it's just the your existing leagues. Yes, somebody's really frustrated with him. They, he may have changed hands two or three times already. Yeah. I've seen him move around in my leagues. He's somebody that invested in him in the last two or three years is ticked off three ways from Sunday. So I read we and read some we read some 20, 2017 games but to Casey's point, first game of the season in 2016 comes out super hot, 13 targets, 8 for 106. Couple of weeks of just being on the Dolphins and maybe he got nicked up there too, you know, what Jay was re- reading some of those injuries. But middle of the season he goes Eight targets for a buck oh three, five catches, ten targets, eight catches, seventy nine. So like that's what I that's what you pick and choose some of the games where you can find them at least be an elite. You right. know? Like you you know, you could go around and looking through game logs all you want and you can say, Oh, well, this guy had six catches over here, a couple of twos, threes, what if you see somebody getting thirteen targets, eight for a hundred, ten targets, eight for seventy, five for a hundred, you know, those are big time games in the NFL. Right. You know, on the road no less, and all three of those games I'm talking about. And obviously they're probably getting beat up and probably trying playing from behind because that's what Miami does, but they they were two and one in those contests. One, two of them lost one of them. Right. So that's, and I mean, I, I mentioned when we were there. in the draft, you know, that we we all love Diggs and the stats for Diggs and Parker aren't that far off. I mean, they're definitely it's the touchdowns. There, there, there's a mar- there's a gap between the two, but like Diggs had a lot of touchdowns. Last Diggs, year. Diggs had a lot of touchdowns, and you know, Diggs obviously hasn't been healthy. They've both missed a, a decent amount of games here and there, but you know, Devontae Parker's got ten less games started than than Stephon Diggs, 
And Diggs has been great in his own right. They're kind of two different receivers. Obviously, Diggs is kind of that more Antonio Brown-like, and as you mentioned, Parker's kind of maybe more of like the A.J. Green kind of type right. of guy. Right. Um, and yeah, the, when you compare the stats, are they the, the closest thing ever? No, but they're they're not like so far off that it's unbelievable that these guys could easily be swapped with one another. I mean, I think we did the math it would take in order to, to make up that 10-game difference and get to the same stats as Stephon Diggs. Parker would have to average six catches, 50 yards, and almost a touchdown. Almost a touchdown a game. A game. So the touchdowns are the big separators right. at the yeah, which that would be pretty solid I mean, numbers to sustain. But it's not a, out of the realm of what he too, could do, right? But he, you know, you make up right. for that with yards or whatever. But um, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's he's so down and this ADP is dropping that I'm I feel comfortable getting in and in, in maybe the sixth round. I mean, late six, and and you're looking for you know we're all trying to go running back heavy in the top three, four, five rounds. And you need to make up some ground, and we're taking Marvin Jones because because he's a back end wide receiver one, and we're taking Larry because he's a wide receiver one. Devontae Parker could could fit right his way up. There, he there. just has a very easy path to becoming a wide receiver. Very easy, one. and and obviously you make that you make that um, you know the investment in Devontae Parker. You go in round eleven and twelve, you get Kenny Stills. If Devontae Parker blows out, Kenny Stills is. I was a late RB, Somebody's late, catch late wide receiver too last year on his production, and even if Devontae Parker's killing it, you know Kenny Stills could still get his fifty catches for nine hundred yards and seven touchdowns and be flex worthy all day long and wide right. wide receiver three territory. Right, for sure. All right, well I think that'll wrap up with some Devontae Parker talk. We got another couple topics we're going to get to. I say we go ahead and take our first ever after show break for the listeners' pleasure, and we'll come back with some uh, little Trey Burton. Welcome back from our first ever break on a after show. Idiots. <laughs> Who takes a break on an after show? Well, we needed more beer. We did. That was it was a ploy to get another fresh crack on y'all. What'd you say? You came here to do two things? Drink some beer and do a podcast. <laughs> Almost out of beer. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> well, hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty or individually at IMC Myers at Dynasty Big Co at J Wings World. I'm at IMC Myers. That's that's you. Yeah. You're not at Dynasty Big Co. Mm. Lights are off over there. <laughs> yeah. No room for the. You can't even <laughs> tag Big Co and tweets anymore. Mm -mm. Uh, well, uh, you can't tag me either. But it says that anyone can tag me on my settings. So I don't know what's going mm. on with Twitter. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I definitely didn't go in there and say, "Hey, don't let them tag." Me. <laughs> yeah. Big Co was searching around them settings deep. Yeah, I've had enough of this. <laughs> deep down, I've in the, had it with this tagging. <laughs> deep down in the settings, don't even try to talk right. to me. So to finish to finish up the after show here, or at least the last event that we had circled on this thing. Forty yard. Speaking dash. of Twitter, yeah, well, I'm gonna definitely win in that. Yeah, you would have. I'll, I'll get. The, I'll ah. take. I'll take down the free throw contest. Or the bench presses. You'd, you'd, you'd win the bench I'll, press I'll contest. race you in 40. I, get, I bet Jay Wayne takes me in the bench press. My right shoulder is about to fall off. I would backpedal the 40. <laughs> uh, we probably couldn't beat him backpedaling. He's quick. I'm I'm quicker than I look, for I'll, sure. I could arm wrestle you, but... I, I know how quick you are. I, I played flag football with you once. <laughs> that little finger of yours didn't make it, though. Yeah, one time, one and done, hung him up. <laughs> <laughs> right. hung him up. I was missing tackles he all day. Up, he hung up those cleats with his little ballerina tights. <laughs> or hey, dance there's, tights, there's no, whatever. It's a, it's a uniform. It's, it's, a an, uni out <laughs> it's an outfit. There weren't it's a, tights. It's a uniform. Not a unitard. A uniform. You yeah. can't say anything with tard in it these days. That's out. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure unitard is still kosh. That's the thing. But I did break my finger. <laughs> <laughs> one and only flag football out. In case you've been trying to get me to come out there for weeks. I was like, ah. One day I finally did it. And uh, well, I was think like two plays before that happened, I was like just winded. I was on the defensive line all day rushing the passer. High motor over here. <laughs> And I was just winded, and like I could feel my muscles tighten up. I looked at Casey. I was like, I'm about to pull something for sure. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I had been missing tackles all day, just blowing it, just whiffing. And Casey is is got he's he's, he's you're you're done. You're covered. You're running out of bounds. And instead of just going out, you cut it back inside. The old cutback. He broke his hand on you. And he did. I was like, <laughs> I I said I'm not missing this tackle. So I went in extra hard and got that flag. And as my hands like swiped across i felt something it was like oh that wasn't right and like i pulled my my hand up oh, and that looked thing at had it, a right angle and it was like cock, cock. Uh, it was, it was cocked to the side and i don't know that anyone even saw it and i was just was like 
and I popped it back into place right immediately. I saw you run off holding it. And I was like, that he oh, left oh shit. We're like, where'd Jay Wayne go? Yeah. <laughs> I say sorry, fellas. <laughs> it was just worse than pulling something. <laughs> I don't know. I've never really pulled anything, so but I but I can't imagine a broken finger. Nah. I guess it happens all the time, but I'm a huge wimp. The JJ. <laughs> Yep. All right. Well, speaking of the Twitters, um, Twitter, we were perusing through Twitter the other day and saw, saw a Travis May tweet. He was rather upset about the Trey Burton July ADP, which I would disagree with. He was staunchly appalled. V- very upset about appalled. it. Appalled. Very upset that he went from 97 not, up to 82. Up to Basically, he got to the top spots. six tight ends t- of tight ends. And it was his first tweet was showing the uh, career box score of Trey Burton. Because he's got a <laughs> Which, lot of opportunity. Because he's been a starter. Right. But actually, the game that he started, he was great Crushed this it. year. Yeah, you could plug and play him when Ertz was hurt. Um, and then he was... The other tweet that, that bothered me was somebody said, is Adam Shaheen dead? Which is moderately funny. And of course, uh, he's not yeah, dead. Obviously. Um, <laughs> but then... There would have been a Roto World blur for sure. <laughs> Travis May responded with... You know, or all of a sudden, is there enough targets to support a Rob Anthony Miller and a top tight end option? My goodness, dynasty consensus values are horrifying sometimes. Is that a lot to support all mm-hmm. of a sudden? And he left out Tariq Cohen to help his argument out, but right. still. Well, the, the two games that Ertz missed, he went four for 42 and five for 71 and two touchdowns. Right. Mm-hmm. So not terrible there. And then in March 28th, Coach Nagy confirmed new tr- tight end Trey Burton will play the Travis Kelsey role in the Bears offense. Oh, my God. So there, that answers your Adam so Shaheen let's, let's question. Let's just start start off by saying clearly he's not Travis Kelsey or Zach Ertz. I'm nope. not, we're not putting him on that pedestal of, of those caliber of players. Nope. It's about the role that's going to happen here. And when we talked about it on the, on the draft that we just had at, at, from the three spot there, we took Burton at 10, which... According to the new ADPs, might be a little. You might have to go up a little earlier to target him, which I'm fine with that. That's okay with me. Yeah, uh, you know, I felt like I was cheating the system. To I, get I, did, that late. I, I did too. I'm taking him before that. But I mean, I'm a hundred percent at like basically what happened here was is you know in June you had Hunter Henry at 79. So the top five are as you know it's Kelsey, Gronk, Ertz, Ingram. Najoku, who in June was at 73, Hunter Henry at 79. So for some reason, it hadn't quite kicked in that Hunter Henry's injury and the scope of that thing. So he was still up at six and Jimmy Graham was at seven. Burton only jumped up from, uh, let's see here, uh, 97 to, to 82. 82. That's what I'm 15 total spots. 15 total average. spots, which is, in my opinion, One very round. warranted. Hunter Henry's got a blown ACL. He's not playing at all this year. Yeah, they missed that. Um, and then Jimmy Graham, I mean, he's old, 30, 31. I'm Shell not saying that it's old for a tight year. end. I think that's a good tight end spot. To but be he's drafted. like Jay Wayne, he like, he's like, an old 31. Right. Like Jay Wayne likes to say he's an old 31. He the certainly didn't look like him. Jimmy Graham of old in, in the final year over there in Seattle. Now the 10 touchdowns that he had for Jimmy Graham is, is was it 10 receptions for was, 10 yards and 10 touchdowns? Right. Is that what he had last right. year? It's, yeah. it's fantastic. But you read the rest of the stats and then let's put him up against the 2017 of that Trey Burton had and I mean you had 96 uh, targets for um, Jimmy Graham here 57 receptions 520 yards and then the 10 touchdowns so the 10 touchdowns really saved your day here for well, 96 where you, targets uh, right so. on where you drafted yeah Jimmy Graham and what yeah. you were getting now he did go to uh, Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay which we all like Martellus the Bennett, idea of and it. we've all liked the tight end idea in Green Bay for quite some time, but it really hasn't worked out since Jermichael Finley a while ago. Forever ago. Um, so maybe it'll be great, but maybe maybe Jimmy Graham didn't quite look like the Jimmy Graham that you once knew. He absolutely did not. I sold both of my shares in the offseason. As soon as he signed up with A-Rodge, I got Marvin Jones in one, play, in one league, and I got a first-round pick in another league. Thank right. you very much. So on 31 targets, which is... <laughs> You know, yeah. 65 less than Jimmy Graham got. Uh, Trey Burton caught 23 balls and five touchdowns, 248 yards. So 270 less yards than total for old Jimmy Graham last year. And, and you know, 23 to 57 receptions. But on 60, 
five less targets. Like yeah, and the difference and, and still had half the touchdowns. That's that's the and thing. And wasn't yeah. even really playing. The like, targets aren't even close. He gets half the many half as many touchdowns. Burton's six three two thirty five. So it's not like he's you know he's not Gronk size. He's not even Kelsey size, but he still like crushes the forty yard dash. He's hyper athletic, and he plays. He's, he's going to play in the he slot. Plays he's the wide play, receiver right. tight end position. Like he's not the blocking tight end. He's the wide receiver tight end. And he, it's six three two thirty five. Like that's just barely bigger than Des Bryant. You know right. what I mean? Like his it's not out of the realm of possibilities that he goes out there and gets one hundred twenty five targets in this offense. Well, that's what I mean. The numbers for Kelsey, I think last like one hundred and thirty targets are around what Kelsey got last year. Yeah, eighty three catches. Which is ridiculous. When you good. wind that down, you know, Delaney Walker's up there with like 110. Ertz is up there with around 110. Yeah. It's not definitely not out of the question for this guy to get 100 plus targets. Yeah. Right. We'll offense. break down the number of targets, right? So one of the th- points was that Travis May didn't think there would be enough targets to go around for everyone, right? So you, you take, so right. let's say well, they are the middle of the pack, right. right? So basically, where Nagy's coming from is the Chiefs. So they had 540 some odd pass attempts last year yeah which, which is which is the middle 17th. the middle of the row that's 17 basically middle of the pack basically half. so that's average let's just say or something you know i don't i don't know if that's exactly average so don't at me about it <laughs> it's close but so if you let's let's say a rob gets 120 targets or uh, make it like give 140. 100, give 140. Let's give him target hot. So like they got takes a calculator. It down to 400. Eight. We're down to 400. Julio got, a, Julio got 140 targets. Let's give him Julio targets. Let's give him 140 targets. Which is a ton so of that, targets. That takes us down to five, 400 targets left. Yep. All right. So if. if and if, we're going to give Anthony Miller. If Anthony Miller gets. Let's give him Juju Smith Schuster targets. Let's give 80? him 80 targets. Juju Smith. So we get down to 320 targets. Okay, let's give let's give Tariq uh, Cohen. Tariq Cohen. Let's, give him, let's give him Christian McCaffrey targets. Down down another hundred. So we're two twenty. We're d- we're already, yeah we're down to two twenty, but we got the three biggest guys already, right? Right. So let's average Howard in. He's probably going to see it, 40, if, 40 if, targets. Let's give him. I mean, you can, 50. Give him fifty. Let's give him fifty. There's no way he's getting fifty. I mean, he Tariq probably Cohen saw fifty. He probably Not saw but, fifty but last year. Tariq Cohen gets a hundred. There's no way he gets fifty targets. How many targets did Jordan Howard have last year? But on, on the same, well, just while Jay Wayne's efforting here, on yeah. the same thing of saying like, oh, well, you're going to show me the game log of what Trey Burton did while he was not a starter. Like, I know that Travis Mays a, a Titans fan, so like you didn't want Delaney Walker who was getting, Vernon Davis was over there. He's for, playing in front of Delaney Walker. I don't know what the numbers are for Delaney sure. Walker, well, that, that's, but he wasn't getting any snaps either. For Yeah, for, for basically... Comes over and he's been great. Basically, what aggravated you there was he's using the game log of a backup tight end where if you just zero in on the games where he started with the primary tight end injured, he crushes. He's 26 years old. He's athletic. He's been in the tight end friendly system, but he's the tight end number two over there. He goes in now. He's going to be the tight end one for guess what? Another tight end friendly system. Right, and and I will say that I've been a I've been a, a, a Trey Burton guy for a while. Like when Ertz was struggling to stay healthy and hadn't reached his potential just yet, I was wondering why Burton wasn't on the field more. Yeah, you were. And I'll tell you, and I'll say this but, while we're while we're in the conversation before I forget it, you you you're a Travis May fan. You have been for a while. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying any. You know, it's I'm, just it's a football talk here. He got it, right. you know, it, and and kind of went back. There was a couple of married to the game tweets in there, kind of defending the Trey Burton stance. Well, I didn't tweet at all at him. Well, I thought I, did Jay Wayne, did you throw some uh, something in there at the Travis May tweet? Yeah, no, we were talking about no, DJ Shark. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. That was we did DJ back, Shark. Back we did and battle for. I didn't some have DJ time to DJ facilitate who's, this, this who's, battle because if we got oh, into it, I was I was going to spend twenty minutes of going back and forth, for which is why I don't Twitter back and forth right. because if I want to win, if I'm going to battle, I got right. no time. Then you got to spend the next freaking half hour to an hour proving your point, your position. No way. I don't have because the other guy is there on Twitter all freaking day. I don't know where. Can't understand. I don't get it. I don't. All right, so where are we at here? All right, so Jordan Howard in 2016 had 50 targets, and last year he only had 32. So let's All give right, him so 50. So Cohen's there. Let's so give so 50. Cohen's there, and if he gets that amount, of, let's 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 go 35. Let's go 40. We've already given everybody right. else career year targets. If we go 40, he, you still have 180 targets left, and we already took the top four guys in this. So because we started with 540, we went down 140 so to with Allen Robinson down to 400. Who the hell's we, even on this team? We gave Kevin Tyree, White. We did, gave Tyreek Cohen 100, so we're down to 300. Gave 82 Anthony, Al, Miller. Anthony Miller, so down to 220, and we just gave him 40, 40, to 40 so we're down to 180 targets, and we got the fourth best four four best players on the team covered already. Right, and we still got 180 targets left. Right, so. 
why can't Trey Burton have 120 of those and you give and you divvy up 60 through a couple of scrubs? They do have Kevin White. They do. Where's who is healthy? Could could be good. I don't. Yeah, know. but some again, targets. again, well, we just gave we just gave wide receiver like Julio Jones. We just gave him Julio right. Jones and area AJ Green targets. We just put Julio Christian. Right. We just gave you Christian McCaffrey. And Juju Schuster, right, Schuster right, all right. on the same team. Exactly. We just uh, On the Bears. There's no chance those three and guys I mean, combine yes, for some those of these, targets. Maybe Shaheen will get some targets, and Deion Sims will be in there. He'll get some targets. I no mean, way. the other receivers mm-hmm. are, are... Five targets all Taylor long. Gabriel and Josh Bellamy and... Who? Well, Taylor Gabriel's uh, somebody. But, uh, but well, all right, so my point there, let me just... <laughs> all right, so we just gave out somebody. career years, but we gave out career years to... Two wide receivers and two running backs already, mm-hmm. and if so, that means for you get a career year, you're on the field. So there ain't that many more spots to take up. Yet you know, if any of those guys misses time, there's sure, only five eligible receivers. That's on what the I'm field. saying. Right. So we, and we already got four eligible right. f- eligibles getting career years. All four of them. You know, right. yeah, maybe there's ten and, targets and who knows, that we didn't and who give knows to what the, run. the You know, who knows what the Bears' offense will be? This is a new team, a new system, and and you got Mitchell Trubisky, who none of us really necessarily love, but I don't hate him. He's, oh, hey, he's no, athletic. He, he's got he's got a he's got a decent arm. He seems to you know have a he's a gamer. He seems to have be able to bring his team back from behind and and win games. John Fox, you know, kept him. Kind of held down zero, last year. Zero so. creativity out of the offense right. last year. Didn't start first couple games. Didn't so that way he wasn't in the he wasn't number one quarterback in camp. He was he was backup. He was the rookie. Zero creativity. Zero weapons. Everybody was hurt. Had you know they brought it this entire everybody we just talked about was an overhaul except for the running backs. So they had none of these wide receiver targets to even go around for the quarterback right. last year. I got no problem with Trubisky. I think he's I hope and I think he's actually going to do well. They're going to play a lot more spread. Put him in the shotgun because that's where he does well. All that good stuff's going to happen. It's just you know, if for you for this this whole argument got started over not you know it's just Casey was upset about what he was saying. It's like all right, well we got to tell our listeners. Well, it's don't just hear about, this it's, stuff. It's about the 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 staunchness of that. This is no. This is ridiculous that the dynasty community has got him up to the sixth tight end. Like really, right? He could easily get a hundred plus targets. Right. That's well, easily that, written in the cards here. Well, like you said, like De, I mean, Delaney Walker putting up tight end you know top five numbers is 34 years old jimmy graham has you know blew his knee out and just lucky to even be playing on the field with that patella injury that he had he's 31 so and yeah and and um the dude from the chargers is he blew his knee out right. so he's out for the year it so it didn't why take not? much to get him up from eight to six exactly you know? he said yeah he moved up an one acl round. and an old jimmy graham yeah old, an old an old bodied jimmy graham yeah not a yeah but yeah so dude's 26 had a really nasty injury and he a just goes to ago. play and he's and he's going to play for Nagy in the same type of system right. that kelsey is playing and in, yeah so. so he said the key words of saying you know he's going to be our kelsey but you know there's no reason not to believe that they're going to be in a system that doesn't try to feature an athletic tight end who plays in the slot and off off the line a and good they bit. Paid like him. Doug Peterson and Nagy know one another. Like, right. Yeah. Them boys just he, there's no way that Doug Peterson was like, yeah, you should take Trey Burton, but I you know I don't think he's very good. Yeah, exactly. Probably shouldn't give him too many targets. Right. Yeah. And it's not even a yeah. It's not. And I mean, you could hate as much coach talk as you want, but I mean, them boys know each other. They were in the same system under the same umbrella, for sure. And well, you can first hate order of business talk. that my man did was went out and picked up a tight end that he felt comfortable with, first most likely trying to run his system through. And we don't know what's going to happen clearly, but Trey Burton at eighty two, I can't be upset about that. Like, well, the th- the thing is, is you take that Trey Burton and he's right there. He's wrapped up with. You either get you either go five round, five picks ahead of that on average and get David and Joku, or you go five picks later than that and get Kyle Rudolph. And, and you know what? I'm not upset if you want to take Njoku. He's, yeah, but good he's luck young with, and good luck putting Njoku in sure, your starting lineup. Exactly. Good luck putting. You're going to be waiting good luck for a minute. I believe. Him. Good luck starting him because I don't want to be and, relying on him. I got to take another couple tight ends. Right. And I got and I love I love Kyle Rudolph. I got no problem. I, I think Kyle Rudolph continues to be valued yeah. in the drafts. He's, but past that, Hunter Henry's got the knee blown out. OJ Howard's got. Um, quarterback issues and and Cameron Bright resigned. I be, love I love OJ Howard, but and then you got J- old old body Jimmy Graham, Greg Olson, who's two feet into uh, one foot in the announcer booth already. Thirty four year old Delaney Walker, and and not only that, we just skipped down 60, 40, 40 ADP spots, so we already dropped down. You know, you, it's not like you take 
Trey, take Trey Burton, and then you're done drafting tight ends. Right. You can come back around. Well, that's right. what we did last uh, last go around in the draft here. We took Trey Burton, but then we waited until the 18th, 19th. And round. you don't even have to re- late wait that far. You know, right. you can grab yourself a you know an Austin Safarian Jenkins or a Jordan. I love the idea of taking Jordan Reed now because he's so cheap. Take Jordan Reed at pick 130 on average, and when he's in there for five or eight games, crush crushing. It. Yeah. For sure. What you want to get upset about something, get get upset about the fact that Ertz and Ingram only have three spots between each other. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Yeah. I'm not cool with that. Like, Ingram got a bunch of targets, and I don't dislike Ingram by any means, but I think Ingram's being overdrafted at 43. Like, Ertz earned the respect to be drafted at 43. I, I just can't get on board with Ingram being drafted at 43. Well, it's a production and youth combination, but yeah, you got to... You can only imagine that the production was volume based because everybody was hurt, and it's not that Evan Ingram didn't look very capable and with his athleticism, and he's obviously a big wide receiver. Which had is 115 what, targets. What, what Trey Burton is, yeah, give yeah, Trey sure. give Trey Burton 115 targets and see what he does with it. We right. about, we about to find out. Yeah, I mean, I I, I really think it, you're hard pressed to not see Trey Burton get 100 targets. Right, and so Kyle Rudolph had 81 targets. And he finished as the eighth tight end. Jack Doyle finishes the seventh best. He had 108 targets. You have Jimmy Graham, which I think you already yeah, mentioned, Jack 96 Doyle, targets. I can tell you what Jack Doyle's average yard per reception is. It, it's down it's there like with the running backs. Four point six. <laughs> it's, it's eight. It's eight. And I, you know, I'm, I opened myself up with that because I was oh, looking at say that? his 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 average yard per reception is down there with the running backs christian mccaffrey Le'Veon bell all of them average eight yards and I, so does jarvis landry <laughs> which but jarvis landry got 160 targets and 120 right. catches and right. he was a wide receiver one right not Led the, the league in catches. quick tangent there on you know jack doyle yeah Taking over but jarvis. that's a volume based that's a that's a volume based <laughs> production right there sure you know jack doyle got it you bring in you know, you bring in uh, Ebron. Ebron and add some more weapons in that Ooh, passing Ebron game. Ebron finishes the thirteenth best tight end on eighty six targets. So Trey Burton could get a very he's, solid hundred plus targets and be in the top six easy. He's a young twenty six or twenty seven. I think he's twenty seven, right. twenty six. He's twenty six. He'll be twenty seven in season. He's a young twenty six. He hasn't had a whole lot of wear and tear on his body, and he's entering his prime as a tight end right now. Sure, like. And I, you've seen good flashes He'll out of him. He'll be 27 in October. The stars are just lining up to be on. I'm willing to take a shot on what could be with Trey Burton, and I'm I can't be upset that he's the sixth dynasty running or uh, tight end off the board here. I just I don't you don't understand that whole uh, the upsetness. Right. Same here. Not upset at all. Yeah, I'll I'm take taking Trey it. Burton, and I'm happy about it. I'm right. looking forward to it. You I should have picked him up on all your teams last year. We told you to. We did. That's accurate. We and we told you not to you trade him here. before free agency when it, right. you know, when to see it, where when he was going to land. The value went up, and then it hit free agency, and the value went up again. And then the you can Travis see it. Travis Kelsey. The, you can <laughs> yeah, World exactly. World. And we said that we, all of that. We literally said it was going to happen. We didn't know he was going to go to Chicago, but when he was going to free agency, you knew something was going to happen. So wait around, and then he goes to Chicago. And a month after that, the blurb comes out, and he jumped another two rounds in ADP. So he's up. 100 spots right since january which is crazy but that happens i mean mckinnon's up 100 spots too give it to me give yeah, me that um, funk that sweet that nasty that trey burton sure. stuff <laughs> there it <laughs> is so you guys you guys got anything else to to talk about before we close up shop on on the old after show i mean going Did out y'all hear what trump said just what? kidding i don't know you can say that <laughs> anyone riled up whatever whatever <laughs> jay wayne just said was filthy that was Jay-Z. That wasn't me. No. Well, should we end this thing? Let's get out of here. Yeah. All Put right. It well, it's misery. Go, uh, thanks for joining us on the after show. Go hit up our website, theffdynasty.com. Check that thing out. Scroll around. Do some navigating. We got all our content up there. You can go check out the, the mock drafts that we've been doing. We got two done so far, the three spot, the 10 spot. Click the more tab, and you'll see mock draft boards. You can check out all our YouTube videos on there. Subscribe, and Definitely you can get everything it. just whenever we update, just right. right to your email. Got a couple dropping soon. Uh, we're on any of your pod, pod podcast platforms of choice, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, but most importantly, iTunes. Please go on there. Give us a five-star review. Just hit the little just hit the little button. Holler at me with that Apple Core Media downloads. Right. Yep. Definitely the strongest 
And if, statistic there. if you've been watching on YouTube, you watched anything we've done on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and, and hit the thumbs up button on that. That stuff really helps us out, too. Yep. Helps us be suggested to other viewers and gets our name out there. So we greatly appreciate that. For sure. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties Married to the Game.